he's just a hack. He's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. Jeff Collins, who is the head coach, previously was the head coach at Georgia Tech, is no longer the head coach for the Yellow Jackets. They just announced today, I believe it was a couple hours ago, maybe even less than that, that they are firing Collins and they're moving in another direction. They have had a very underwhelming tenure in his career, his time leading that program, and all it really took was a 1-3 and three start, embarrassing game against Clemson, and then most recently the loss that put the nail in the coffin was the loss that they had uh, against UCF this past weekend. So first off, not surprising that Jeff Collins was fired. He was the next expected guy that was going to lose his job. Everybody was anticipating that Collins was not going to be making it to the end of this season. However, it now opens up the conversation of who the hell are they going to hire? Who is Georgia Tech going to go with? Apparently, they're also firing their athletic director. So this process is going to be very long. This is going to be a complicated process. And I wouldn't be shocked if that decision whoever they decide to hire isn't done with an intention. I'm specifically talking about the athletic director isn't done with the intention to lure another coach from a a smaller program to come there. And on the flip side of that, whichever athletic director they hire, which is going to likely come from a group of five school, maybe one of the Sunbelt teams that they don't just bring over the head coach that they previously had there. I am not privy to the, Athletic director landscape. However, I've got options here that very well could take over and lead the, the the direction for Georgia Tech and help elevate that program in the future. Now, Collins came from Temple, and I think that for them to succeed, they need to look at what is one of the strongest conferences right now in terms of competitiveness and in terms of quality of play. I look at the Sun Belt. You're not going to be, if you're Georgia Tech, you're you're not a big, big big-name program. You're not even in one of the biggest conferences in the ACC. It's one of the weaker Power 5 conferences. I think we can all agree on that. You're not going to be able to pull somebody away, an offensive coordinator from a big program like Todd Munkin from Georgia, I think is unlikely. I feel like Todd Munkin, if Dan Landing can get an Oregon job, he is capable of getting a better job than Georgia Tech. So if they want to get somebody who is going to be a spark for this program, look at a lot of the the programs in the Sun Belt that are producing success. So the top two that I think need to be discussed the most are Sean Clark from App State, who has made that team really fun to watch. We saw what they did against Texas A&M. Now I know that they lost this past weekend to James Madison, but App State over the past couple years under Sean Clark has been Really, really competitive, very, very strong at developing players on that roster. And they've been very effective at recruiting guys in the portal, which is an underrated thing for a group of five school and something that if you're Georgia Tech, you now need to get better at is getting guys from the transfer portal because you're likely not going to get four star recruits, five star recruits to come to Georgia Tech. Instead, you're going to to want to maybe steal some guys that are deciding to leave other programs. That is usually where all these other teams, all these mid-level teams have been able to develop. I also look at Jamie Chadwell from Coastal Carolina, who is always going to be brought up as a a candidate for any of these coaching openings that aren't big programs. It's very unlikely that a massive program with an opening is going to go after Jamie Chadwell. I, I think Auburn might be on the table for him, but... Jamie Chadwell makes perfect sense for this Georgia Tech job. And they run a lot of option-type plays in that offense. And we we get a little bit of a backtrack here of them going with Jamie Chadwell after Collins tried to move that Georgia Tech team away from being an option team. But Chadwell makes a lot of sense. And then the last one, who I think is going to get a lot of buzz, is Tyson Helton at Western Kentucky. Clay Helton's brother, I think, is the relation there. Tyson Helton, Western Kentucky, we saw what they did last year, all the statistics and records that they broke with Bailey Zappi leading the way. And and right now this year, they don't look equally as good, but they still look really competitive. Going and getting Tyson Helton, I think, would lead this Georgia Tech team 
in a positive direction. So to summarize, Georgia Tech needs to go after one of these top programs, coaches at the group of five level. That is what is going to help lead to success. I have to reiterate this before we get into talking about some of the headlines from the games this past weekend. Deion Sanders is not going to leave Jackson State for a Georgia Tech job or a similar job. He has, and if you paid attention to the the Jackson State football program, has made a lot of concessions and given up a lot of things to give back to that community and to that program. Deion Sanders is very invested in building up an HBCU program. He is very invested in turning Jackson State into a competitive football team. He is not going to leave that situation with unfinished business unless it is for a high-level job. Now, if Auburn calls him after they likely fire Brian Harson, if they if Auburn calls him, that's a job that Deion Sanders leaves for. Right now, it doesn't look like Florida State's going to open up. That's the only, one of the few other ones I would consider. But right now, the only jobs that make sense for Deion Sanders to leave is a big SEC program, a big Big Ten program, a bigger to one of the top ACC programs. He's not going to leave Jackson State to go to Georgia Tech. His name is going to get brought up so much in the cycle, and, I, and I saw, I've saw i seen so many people bring him up before this firing happened as a possible candidate for this job. And it is just not going to happen based on if you watch and see and, and even listen to how he talks about that program and how much he wants to elevate that team and, and bring up the, the area around that program, why would he leave to go to a Georgia Tech team that has been relatively hard to win at recently. I just don't see that happening. 